Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to be back in the days of old Hollywood with Marlena Dietrich. Now, I know that, the, I'm trying to think, the only, like the only thing I know about her is that she's from that genre and that she lived to be quite older you know i think she might have been in her 90s even so that's what but that's all i know and the reason why i'm channeling marlena dietrich is because she came up in my channeling with elizabeth taylor so if you haven't watched that one make sure you check out the elizabeth taylor playlist all right so marlena dietrich come on in Oh, she's very classy. She like crosses her legs at the ankles and arches her chest forward, kind of arches her back and throws her shoulders back a little bit. Her chin's up a little bit and then she kind of turns. So she's very classy, has a lot. Talk about like Liz, Elizabeth Taylor kind of has that vibe, but this Marlena is like very serious, astute, very um, classy, but rigid, sort of disciplined. She feels very disciplined. And she's kind of a little bit of sass, but uh, the vibe is very classy, classic. All right. So I don't know much about you. I know you were an actress in Hollywood. I know you're famous. And I know that there's some kind of connection to Elizabeth Taylor. She mentioned you. And so let's talk. All right. So can you begin, Marlena, by telling us perhaps looking back over your life what is one of the biggest things that you feel is what what is one of the things that you feel that we can learn from your life experience one of the big messages or lessons <sighs> never be boring never never be boring when you are unhappy you should know that it is a circumstance that you created and so as well you can change never be boring that is the common the strongest theme of my lifespan never be boring don't be afraid to be taken seriously as an actress as a woman as a person don't be afraid to open your mouth and say what it is that you need to say and be heard. But before doing that, prior to doing that, make sure you have your emotions in check so that you can use them to your full advantage to make sure that you are heard. The ultimate goal is to get what you want, to achieve what it is that you are looking to achieve, whatever it may be, life goal, a role, a house, a man, whatever it may be. I think that many of us actresses in Hollywood were highly underestimated, highly underestimated. And in Hollywood, it's considered an old boys club or an old boys network. And up until quite recently, until the lid was blown off of all that, there, but there hasn't been the talk about the women of Hollywood, and perhaps that would be an interesting book to write about the women of Hollywood and where the power was amongst us as women. While we were portrayed as being catty and quite caught up in our appearances and our looks and our public image, that was only because we were trying to achieve our goals, our individual goals. Just like you have goals for your life, have desires, have dreams. So too did we. And in order to accomplish those dreams, many of us were very strategic or there were tactics that you must utilize in order to accomplish said goals. You have to know the industry, you have to understand what is expected and you have to rise above those expectations, exceed the standards, stand out in some way and consistently stand out 
so that then you would be chosen above others. While it looked like there was a lot of cattiness, competition, or backstabbing, and yes, there was. I would be remiss to say that there wasn't. There definitely was. Some of the gossip rumors were quite true, and in fact, the truth far more shocking than the rumors, especially when it comes to the politicians who were involved quite a bit in Hollywood. Many of us were connected with many a different public figure and politicians to be exact. The true power, however, is in recognizing your power, where you're able to employ such tactics or strategies to leverage what is being talked about you in a way that you can control or at least at least guide your public image. And that occurred especially during the late 60s and into the 70s in Hollywood, a time when I was moving and evolving and s stepping back into the theater, into different kinds of roles and experiences much more as a social light, as one who supports the arts and not one who participates in them. You see, by that time, in those days, I was aging out of my youthfulness and becoming much more of a, a icon, an icon, much more of a, a legend, you could say. And I don't say that in a way of conceit. I say that in, in a form of, of pride where I had the capacity to be able to truly influence and create my success and my legacy. I will say that the men in my life did not necessarily contribute to my acting success, but they did contribute to the notoriety and the fame that was achieved around me. So. I did have many famous suitors and a few husbands to boot. It looks like three. I can see three, I think. Once and there's a man named Stan. I think it's Stan or Stanley that's involved in her life experience. Um, I also see somebody that's a director or producer that's also involved in her life. I see Los Angeles, California, and Hollywood. I see um, Paramount Pictures and then the actual property or site location that was Universal Studios right before they had the fire there. So like I'm seeing the hill and I don't know why I'm seeing the side of the hill, but that's what I'm seeing. I don't know what that means. You guys can put in the comments below if you do. So now I'm doing clairvoyance, which means I'm seeing stuff and I'm also feeling, sensing, getting information from her without a direct uh, clairaudient hearing of her um, or feeling, sensing her. All right. Did you have children? Yes. She's saying like, I think a son and a daughter. I see a boy, but then I also see a girl. Um, but then I only see one. So she might only have one living child. Hmm. Or one that she's close to. Something feels strange there. I feel like she was hot and cold, like almost a little bipolar. I don't mean to be rude to any of the Marlena Dietrich fans. I don't mean to be disrespectful at all. Um, but the energy vibe feels like Oh, she's really hot and then she's cold and then she's mean, kind of mean, like a mean girl. Like she feels like a mean lady <laughs> kind of thing, you know. But she assures me, like as I say that, she assures me and she, she sits up straight and she says, I have high expectations. We must have high expectations. If I don't expect high standards of the women around me, who will raise, who will raise our recognition as a whole if we only provide subpar work? then who could take us seriously? Who? It's not just for the Irma Bombecks of the world to make change. We've got, we've got to be driven ourselves. And I do see that. I see her as a bit of a, a figurehead for change. So I don't know if later in her life she was involved in philanthropic work. She looks like she's really active in the arts, the arts community. I don't know if she's giving a lot or she has a foundation for arts, like performing arts and art 
of, and I see her near a museum. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if she lived near a museum. I see her having like a apartment or loft in New York City, but I see her really actively engaged in Hollywood in her early days. But then I see also some theater acting in New York City. And so I see, and I see her making a commute going back and forth. And I also see her potentially having an affair with somebody very famous that was married. I don't know if they were both married at the time or what the deal was, but I see her having somebody um, connected to that. She was, that was very famous. Um, she has just a presence about her that she feels very confident, so confident. And yet she doesn't seem like uh, like a B word necessarily, but I could see how people would be really intimidated by her. Like actresses could be, other actresses and things could be really intimidated by her. But I think she had to be tough. I think she had to be strong. I think she raised, tried to raise the standards as a whole for women in Hollywood and for actresses. And um, she was kind of part of the empowering the women, the power of women and strategic and um, strategic ways and using tactics. I don't know how to explain this. I don't know if I'm explaining this accurately, but like the upliftment of the rise of powerful women and like Elizabeth Taylor, like I feel like Marlena had an impact on that. And she came before that, you know, that's how it feels to me. Um, a little before, like a little bit of a leadership kind of energy about her. A little bit scary, but a little bit <laughs> leadership like. Like not warm and fuzzy. She doesn't seem all warm and fuzzy as to me, I gotta be honest. I see her with a dog, like a fluffy white dog. Uh, do you know if she had a fluffy white dog? I don't know. Um, maybe later in her life, I'm not sure. Um, I see her speaking multiple languages. I'm not sure which languages, but multiple languages. And then let's see what else I see around you. I don't see anything start. I see an Edward or Edmund, Ed, an ED name as well. Um, it could be Edison, an ED name as well. Um, see if there's anything else interesting. I see like Frank Sinatra and the rat. Is it the rat pack? Is that what they're called? I see that little bit of club vibe there, jazz club vibe. Mm. Yeah, powerful woman, I think. That's what it feels like to me. Strong willed, strong woman, but not because she hadn't been through a lot. Like 16, age of 16, 14 or 16 is pivotal for her. I don't know if it's a mom thing, like mom dies or I moved or I'm 16 and now I'm discovered or something like that. I don't know, but 16, 14, 16, 14, 16. Probably today I feel like 14, but back then it was 16. Um, and I feel like there's this tear. So it's like something major changed in her life. I feel like about 16, major change. Could be a major move. She could have moved um, or lost a parent. I mean, it's if you know in Marlena Dietrich's life at the age of 16, what pivotal thing would have happened to her at that point, please put it in the comments below. Remember here at Above Life Channel, as Bridget here, a medium psychic connector, I don't know all the details. I just share what I feel and then you guys can fill in the blanks and have chat amongst each other and add value through your comments. Totally cool to do that. That's encouraged. Write in the comments below. Yeah, age 16. <laughs> Something like major. Um, and I do feel like wartime too. Like I don't know if she was married to somebody in the service or if the military had something to do with her or if she was in a movie with the military, something big military thing. I don't know, I see the military stuff. Like war, like woo, -woo war, like parade, everybody comes home, kind of a vibe. We're coming home, kind of a vibe. Oh, let's start a family, oh, let's do this kind of vibe. Um, and that's in reference to America. Like World War II, I think. I think it's what it is. It's like this vibe, I don't know, coming to America, World War II. Everybody comes home, everybody's happy because they're home, starting families, starting a new life, building houses, you know, having life, all that. I don't know, something about that. I'm not sure what that means. And go ahead and put in the comments below what you think it is, all right? So Marlena Dietrich, thank you so much for our chat together today. I appreciate it very much. I'm sure we'll get additional questions and things so that perhaps in the future, if we have a panel or something with some old Hollywood 
some Hollywood movie stars like yourself, it would be great to chat again. Again, this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. It's my, my pleasure to channel Ms. Marlena Dietrich in the afterlife Hollywood actress extraordinaire. Remember the purpose here is always to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because this, this is your life. So live it and just live it. Thanks for watching.